This is single effect evaporator. The feed enters here, and when the liquid evaporates, it exits at the top as vapor, denoted by V. The product which is now much more concentrated, due to evaporation of the liquid solvent, exits at the bottom as product P. The feed enters with a composition XF, temperature TF, enthalpy HF and heat capacity CF. The product has composition XP, temperature TP, and enthalpy HP. The vapor exits with temperature TV and enthalpy HV. The working pressure of the evaporator is defined and is denoted P. In solving evaporator problems, we have to make some assumptions, to simplify our calculations. Please take note of the following assumptions, because this will be our basis in solving. Heat capacity of the feed, is assumed to be the heat capacity of the water in the feed alone, for feed of inorganic salts of dilute solutions. Heat capacity of the feed, is constant until boiling. Unless stated that the boiling point rise is negligible, we will account for the boiling point elevation of the liquid. If we account for boiling point elevation, the vapor will exit at enthalpy, equals to Hb, plus heat capacity, times boiling point elevation. And the product will exit at T infinity, equals to Tv plus boiling point elevation. Fourth and fifth assumption is that, steam enters as saturated vapor, and the superheat is neglected. Steam exits as saturated liquid, and it condenses without subcooling. Here are our equations for evaporation. We have, the overall material balance, the solute material balance, and the enthalpy balance, and the heat balance. Our equations are pretty simple. The tricky part in solving evaporator problems is understanding the problem. The enthalpies can be found in reference textbooks, such as Perry's.